Welcome to Flex Effects tutorial. Today we're going to focus on uh, soft cloth interactions with uh, props. Uh, the example we're going to use is I've got this horse here I bought in the marketplace and the uh, character from the Assassin's playset. And I'm, I want to focus on making the cloth interact with the prop. In this case, it's the horse, and I want the cloak to lay over the side of the horse so it looks natural. Um, if if you don't do this, it just it doesn't give it the same realistic look, and I'm gonna show you how we do that. So let's go over to the project tab, and we're gonna select rigid body under the physics settings. Turn that on, make sure we're on the physics engine, and we're gonna click soft cloth, and I like to bake the animation. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll see why here as we go forward. I'm gonna go over, here we've got the cloak, and I use a dummy prop, and I'm gonna show you why in order to create the collision shape. Uh, if you just do it any other way, it just won't work. So. So again, we're focusing on the cloak, um, and if we run the, uh, the the animation, we hit go on the timeline, you'll see the physics, the cloak falls right through the horse, right through the prop. Uh, it doesn't recognize the shape of the horse. Um, and so you either get rid of the cloak, or uh, again, I'm gonna show you. So a lot of folks probably thinking we'll just activate the physics on the horse. So one thing I'll show you is activate the physics, rigid body, kinematic, and you can use box sphere. Uh, you cannot use the bottom two, the self mesh or the convex hull. I will tell you that the uh, physics engine will not recognize those meshes as uh, boundaries or collision shapes. So first problem you have, you know, I'll just run here on the sphere just to make a point. We'll, we'll go and run again. We're just focused on the cloak and right. It just pushes it up out of the way. And that's pretty confident. Not what anyone's looking for. Let's erase the, um, the soft cloth animation and we'll start over. So what are we gonna do? So I had already created this dummy prop. Um, let me just turn it off so you can see it, that I'm gonna use, and, and basically what I'm doing is I'm using this dummy to simulate the shape and of the, the, the horse's body and we're creating that collision shape just like you use when you do character animation and you're looking at the interaction with the char character itself, but props don't have collision shapes so we have to create them. So. I'm gonna create create the cylinder and then define it, just hit the align and uh, like in this case, I'll just select the character. I wanna to align to X, Y, and Z and it'll find where that shape came in and now I can just edit it right here. I wanna rotate it. Um, and then I like to use the uh, local move. You can use local or wor world coordinates. Uh, Local will follow the shape better, in my opinion. So I'm gonna adjust. You can see I, I have to take the cylinder and you make it a little narrower and a little longer, and that's how, how I'm gonna match the uh, shape of the horse's body. And um, so I'll turn off the, the dummy here. Um, let me uh, adjust this. I gotta lengthen it. Um, oh, I hit rotate, sorry about that. Let's go back down to the scale and try again. Um, in the X axis, which is there we go, which is the uh, red axis. I want to cut that in about in half. And, and you can hit R and just bring it in, or you can type in the scale. In this case, I know I want about half. I don't want to mess with the Y direction, which is uh, the green, and I want to change blue, which is Z, and a little less than twice. So I, I just know that from trial and error. And, and, and to get things to look the way you want, the shape and how you bring it up and animate it, and again, I'm going to use the local move. You can lose, use the local or the world. Um, just depends on how, you, how your, your scene is built. So now I'm going to turn on the physics for the cylinder. Again, kinematic, uh, very important. It's rigid body, kinematic, activate physics. The bounding, you have, you, again, you have the box sphere and uh, capsule, uh, the bottom two uh, self mesh and convex hull will not work. It's a shame because they match the cylinder perfect, but uh, maybe someday. Um, so I'm going to use the box because it, it most easily allows me to to uh, to match the shape of the uh, horse's back, and and it's very scalable. So I'm going to bring it up there, kind of put it where I want it. Um, I am going to cheat a little uh, just for the sake of time. If I go up here to the dummy prop and I turn it on, and I used an animation, and, and the reason is you'll see it. If I wanted to, after the physics is established, I want to push the cloak back. When we get done and I finish this, I'll show you the difference if you just start and run the, the, uh, the, the physics simulation uh, with the dummy prop in position. And, and you get a little different uh, reaction from the cloth. 
It just depends on which one you want. So I'm lining this up, just using the different tools to where I get it. And again, I'm trying to get the bounding box as close as I can to the, uh, the back and the angle of the uh, courser. And again, I bought that in the marketplace for a couple of bucks. Um, so then I'll just bring it down here because again, I'm, I'm going to push the cloak out of the way. So, and, and you can take different angles and get different results. So play around, find what you want. So I'm going to get rid of the dummy and now I'm just going to turn on the cylinder. We just create it. And again, that's just create under the primitive shapes and use the align tool to find it. So we've come over here to the cloak physics. It's turned on. We don't have any, uh, always make sure under soft cloth, if you're using baked animation, you don't have any baked animations, make sure you, you, you delete them. And look at that, I run it, and what do you see? The, uh, it pushes the cloak back. Um, I've got the collision margin at 0.8. Uh, you can play with that number as well. And if you look here, now you can see it, it. That's exactly what we're looking for, right? It's playing over the back of the horse. Uh, and again, this is, this is quick. You can spend a lot of time with it. And I, what I do, I lost it. So, And you can hit F if you ever uh, need to find the shape. Just select it and bring the character back. I'm not sure how I lost it, but there you go. So, and, and, and this is dynamic. So if you're running and there's wind, you, you know, if, if you look at our, when our upcoming video shows up, we use a lot of wind and effects and all to have things blowing in the wind. It's pretty cool. Uh, hair, just so you know, same thing. Activate your physics, look at your soft versus rigid collision. And if you adjust that one, it will actually push the hair out further and further so you can get it away from the cloak as much as needed. Um, there are other tutorials on, on how to do that, so I'll, uh, I'll leave that alone in detail. Um, but let's run it again. And uh, okay, I've got a couple of things recorded. And here's, here's where you got to keep your timeline clean, right? If you look, uh, I, I run this, looks good, but I didn't run it all the way out to the, to the end of the clip, so it falls back because there's no physics because I turned the physics off. By the way, once you bake the animation, turn off the physics for that item if you like it otherwise it'll try and just redo it every time you run it and and for me I, it just saves processing power to to do these things one at a time um and i as opposed to having the hair and the and and everything else trying to figure its way around at the same time so um so if you look there again we've got a baked animation it's it's just like a motion clip except it's for the cape and now the cape looks natural. So here's another thing you can do real quick. So same thing, we're gonna create a cylinder, we're gonna find it with the align tool. I'm running really quick through this. I, obviously I sped up the video a little bit just for the sake of your time. Since we already went through this, get rid of bloom. Um, I'm gonna bring the cylinder in. And, and in this case, what I'm doing is I'm gonna show you that we're gonna run the animation with the cylinder in place um, uh, and not push it up into the cape and, and you'll see the different, the way it falls uh, a little differently. It, uh, it reacts to the bounding box. So again, the whole thing we're doing here is creating collision shapes and um, same thing, rigid body, kinematic, um, can do other tutorials about what those other things mean. But here I'm, I'm working with you guys on creating bounding boxes. And, and again, you can see there, uh, I, I selected the self mesh just doesn't do anything. I can select the uh, sphere or the box, you know, but the box is the, the best one for this particular item for a horse, you, you know. And so you have the three items, three uh, different options, and, and you can shape them and use your collision margin to determine how hard or soft it'll fall around that box. So, so here, you know, again, here we go. We're going to set it up. Let's run it again. And and you can see it takes a little while for the for the for the fabric to uh, settle. That's why I was uh, saying earlier. You know, you might in this case it took a couple of hundred frames. So don't start your animation until you know as far until you've got that settled. And now you can uh, have the character you know motions and all. And, and obviously, I haven't set up the reins. There's no horse animations. There's no head or anything. We're just focusing on the soft cloth here. And um, I really hope that helped you. And uh, again, um, if you like it, like and subscribe. If you have any questions, I know I really ran through this quickly. Uh, originally, this was going to run about 20 minutes. And I, I just am trying to keep these things around 10. So have a good day.